Guys, what swims up to 43 miles an hour and can get up to 2,000 pounds? Giant bluefin tuna. The crew and I embarked on a journey to Massachusetts where the refreshing waters cradle one of America's most exceptional fisheries. The goal, to catch a giant. Guys, we're in Cape Cod and we just landed this fish on a torpedo jig. Not only that, when he got up to the surface, he was attacked by a giant great white shark. Stick around, this is gonna be an amazing video. Rendezvous, Johnny Jigs HQ, 6 a.m. Our rods are tubed, our bags are packed, and now it's time to hit the road. From jumping airports to planes, crossing through states, to buses to rentals, Traveling through cityscapes and taking all the adventure along the way. Still, all fall short in comparison to what we were about to experience on the water. <laughs> I think we're gonna get some live drinks. <laughs> yeah. Are we gonna get four? Yeah. More louder rules. And then you want to do them the side order of like fried clams. Yes. And I want to. Where's the pint? Oh, there we go. And a cup of clam chowder for me. Lobster roll number one. Sir Crickets, Fish and Chips, Orleans, Massachusetts. So, wait, first off, cup of clam chowder number one as well. This is my first bite ever of a lobster roll. <laughs> Here's the thing. <laughs> Here's the thing. Shellfish is my favorite seafood. Out of all the seafood that we had, shellfish is my favorite. This lobster is at the top. And to put it on a roll is just decadent. But that is so delicious. $147. Whenever we venture off to new places, the first question that comes to mind is how's the local fishery and how's the local eatery? Fortunately for us, our very own Chris Doyle has all the 411 when it comes to this specific area of the world. Who's humming, ladies and gentlemen? Who's humming? So we're in Orleans, Massachusetts, out on Cape Cod right now. We just got into town and this is our second stop. First was Sir Crickets, fill our belly with a lobster roll and some whole belly clams. Second stop here is the Goose Hummock Shop. Now, one thing you might find out watching our video here is I've been coming here my whole life. My grandfather bought property here in the 60s and he just nurtured a beautiful place for my family to come and enjoy our summers. Goose Hummock is a shop that I would always come to to gear up. A couple years ago, through our distributor Folsom, Johnny Jigs set them up as a dealer, and uh, this is our first in-person visit to the shop. I know they're really jigging-centric. They're really dialed in on the tuna, as well as everything else that is uh, inshore and offshore here, the striped bass, namely. Um, but we're gonna go inside and go check out the Johnny Jigs spread and talk some jigging with these guys. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. We came up from Florida to fish with Matt Dempsey. Sick. Hey, at least you picked the right guy. At least you picked yeah. the right dude. No, Dempsey's, Dempsey's yeah. the best. We've Sorry, been man. we've been talking to him for a while, but we we own Johnny Jigs. Yeah, I figured with all the yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Johnny Jigs. Yeah. Will John? I'm this is something like, cool. This is a handmade lure by a guy named Robert Davies. This guy, what they're telling me is he whittles it down 
on a lathe, I guess, yeah. runs yeah. the wire exactly. through. Him and his wife are a uh, double duo team that make these things by hand and none of them are exactly the same. So each one has the weight written in on them on individual packages. He's got a couple different sizes here. And from what I'm told, these things crush. So they are all the same, because they all crush. They, they all, all crush, crush. that's it. Yeah. Seeing our jigs in Goose Hummock is a sight a younger me would have never thought imaginable. Being one of the premier tackle shops on the Cape and where my family has geared up for decades produces quite a sense of accomplishment. Mm, let's go fishing with this guy. When it comes to getting food for a day out in the water, for us, we really try to keep it simple. A few sandwiches, some trail mix, a bag of chips. You can know it. A free vented coffee. How'd you do that? I don't know, the receipt spit it out. It's my day, wake up tomorrow and I catch the big tuna. And a lot of drinks. What we don't want to do is overload the captain's cooler space with a bunch of food that we're gonna not end up eating. So keep that in mind. It's kind of cool how my grandfather paved the way for this trip. There have been four generations of my family now that have been spending their summers out here on the Cape. As we started to roll down the final winding roads, this mysterious fog started to set in and actually enveloped the house when we got there. And I couldn't help but think John and Will have no idea what's in store for us tomorrow. Johnny Jig's team has been successful up against the bluefin tuna in the Pacific Ocean, but now it's time for the ultimate test. Giant bluefin tuna in the Atlantic Ocean. We were greeted warmly by my family and we said our hellos, but then we had to turn our attention quickly towards rigging and dialing in our gear. It's a 25 minute drive from here too. <laughs> 4.45, the 3 a.m. wake up call. I flew all the way across the country. I got up at 4.45 this morning. I got to get up at 3.30? Yeah, yeah, no, you got to get up earlier. Holy crap. Yeah. I'm napping tomorrow afternoon. You just tell that captain <laughs> I'm taking a nap. Hopefully it doesn't start raining. Chris, I know what you're talking about. That's, uh, <laughs> That's our note to TSA. They have broken our rods yeah, before. Oh, we did get TSA'd. Yep. Look, every time. Wait, wait, back up. Every time they inspect our rod. So when you get that, you just want to, now you want to keep a careful eye on all your guides on your rods and hope. Ooh, oh, that's almost tragic. You do have tomatoes. We've caught many tuna in our adventures, but there is one we've yet to land. I'm talking about one of the most famous fish in the world, giant bluefin tuna. We've all seen it on TV shows of men taming these beasts with monster rods and reels, using live bait and commercial gear for pumping the brakes on Moby Dick. We can't help but ask, will they eat the jig? Can you land one of these fish on lighter gear? Do we have what it takes to break the will of such an incredible fish? There has been two fish in our crosshairs for quite some time. One being a purposely caught swordfish on the jig, and second being a giant bluefin tuna. This is our chance to make one of these happen. We are meeting the 
captain at 4.45 in the morning, which is very early. And he's 25 minutes away from where Chris and Will are staying. And Devin and I are about 20 minutes away from where Chris and Will are staying. So we have to get up super early in the morning. So we've basically put all of our gear together as best as we can. And that way the boys can just get into the car in the morning, we drive straight there, and then we're off. And we've got about an hour run out to sea, and we are going to fish all day long, and we're gonna fish hard, stay tuned. But for now, it's time to catch some Zs. I always find myself tossing and turning the night before going out, especially in a new fishery that I haven't experienced. And I don't want to be depleted of energy, especially if we hook into a giant. So here we are arriving at our home for the next few days, the captain's quarters. Hey guys. What's up? Good morning. Nice to meet you guys. Johnny. Yeah. Hello, Chris. How's it going? Hey, nice to meet you, man. Whose ride is that? Tides. That's why we can't get out of Chatham today. We'd have to wait till like 7:30 right. with the tides. Low at 10. Yeah. But it's still not low yet. So, so someone tied their boat up and climb the hill here. Or no, I bet he left it on the dock last night when it was high. Can I permission to board? Walking the dock to an angler is the equivalent to walking the red carpet. The ocean is our realm and its treasures are for us to discover. It's our duty as fishermen to get out there on the water and seize the moment. down all the way to 150 and we're in 180 so anywhere pretty much the whole water column spare game <laughs> yeah should I leave these on and bounce them around oh yeah yeah right how we would do it on the spin. Right. That's how. Kind of a speed jig. Kind of, but not like overly. More like just trying to keep it in the zone as long as possible. But it's a lot different than the conventional. Let me know when you guys are ready. The ocean, home of the scaled beasts. The bigger they are, the harder they can fight. The more rewarding the catch. For us at Johnny Jigs, the chance to catch a monster on our very own designs fuels further the desire and hunger we feel for life at sea. A little dunk, I'm like, oh, you about to get this! 
broke that poor thing's neck. Yeah. <laughs> Little guy. Little bump can turn into a big bump. It's it weird. It, it's soft for a second, and then once you jack them, that's when they realize it's cool. Yeah. yeah. So we're catching these whitings out here, and they're hitting this sand eel jig. And this is actually a good bait to use for the tunas. Obviously, you know, it's a, there's thick schools of them out here, and they're eating the jig and the tuna are eating them and it's a big circle of life out here. It's pretty incredible. The whales are all around us. They're making sounds that sound like Jurassic Park. The bait schools are thick. The birds are so thick that you can almost walk on top of them across the water. But uh, So this little white is going to go back into the water. If we were bait fishermen, I'd, I'd definitely hook him up and throw him back down. What's your favorite jig? Johnny jigs. So it seems like everything's falling between 150 and 80 feet. We're in 240, wow. We're in 240 here. When you say 80, you're talking 80 foot depth or 80 off the bottom? Um, 80 foot depth. That bait line is just, it looks like a thermal climb. We just gotta get them either blowing above it or below it. We are targeting the whale feeds, approaching them with the boat, dropping our jigs down. We're working our jigs hard through the water column, paying close attention for any tuna marks we might see, and then react quickly to them so we can get one of these bites. Everything is feeding. It's game time. Flying wind. Take one. Flying whale. <laughs> what should we name on the flying whale? The flying whale. Come on, get down there. In Florida, we don't see whales at all. And I feel like a complete tourist because I am just shocked at the size of these creatures and in awe about what they're doing. These big whales are bubble feeding. They're diving down, pushing bubbles up, which pushes the krill up, and then they're all popping their heads up at the same time. How they don't get a mouthful of birds is besides me. But it's amazing to see these big creatures. We love coming out here and seeing wildlife. We love chasing big fish. I'm hoping to land a big swordfish one day on the jig, but for today, I'm looking for that giant tuna. I'm switching it up. I want to make this happen. Big mark at 50 feet, so I ripped it up where I was hoping to get it in front of his face, but he didn't eat it. But that's the best move when you know they're up high is just to rip it up and get it in front of their face, really. That's the move. Dude, I know I did not. I know I did not hit bottom. When you're fishing for large game fish, like big bluefin tunas, all for that one moment, and then the excitement and the adrenaline just goes from zero to full throttle on the boat and it's all worth it all the work there we go settling into this fishery and getting used to our surroundings is a task in its own we're using a whale trail as our best chance to mark giant bluefin too we've marked a few up into this point in the day already There are subtle hints that the fish are absolutely here and that our big catch is on the horizon. I don't know, the two assist hooks, you know, mouth and side, and they, they seem to stay hooked pretty freaking good. And we don't, we don't, the, the tip up game isn't even uh, in our thought process whatsoever. Gotcha. Which is pretty wild. Yeah. A lot of times I'll actually put my foot up here like this. Yeah. We're down. We're so tipped now, down. We're really tipped down. So now I've got I've got this. So you're pulling them real only, really, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. And then, but you know, then then you get to that last bit where the tuna just, just gets sideways on you and doesn't want to come up. Then then you can kind of you can kind of play them with some short pumps. Yeah, you, you see know. people. I I've seen people do it where they walk back a few feet. Yeah. And you just pull them up like that. A lot of times I'll kick it in reverse. Yeah. And, but I'm pulling them up you know, just trying to move their head up out of the water. Right. 
I guess our, our whole idea is like to not not have to put as much pressure on the rod because we're using light rods and then the light rods allow us to jig all day therefore we get to catch the fish on the way we like to do it you know and it's sport fishing it's not like you're not going to see the commercial guys yeah. come out here and and use this we're doing it because we enjoy doing it well we got something a little bigger than a whiting i think <laughs> Oh, two. Oh, oh, this hasn't been done today, guys. Double header whiting. My sand eel torpedo just cannibalized an actual sand eel. That's how quick you are. So, this is uh, what we're marking there that almost looks like a thermocline in the middle of the water column, and that is a sand eel. And this is a very common forage out here. And why we made this jig right here. That's the sand eel torpedo. That's the sand eel. See, we put a nice white belly on it, silver side, a little extra green and kind of copper in the back. Very cool. All right, so I've got whiting and I've got sand eel in the boat. What do I want to catch next? Striper. Striper, baby. Nice striper. Striper nice on the jig. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Can I grab her? You want me to? Here, you grab him. You got it. You got it. See the head move? Yeah! Straight bass on the jig, baby! So we. There we go. Beautiful striped bass, right on the sand eel torpedo. That's super cool. That right there is my first striped bass caught on one of our Johnny jigs. Chris has got a striper right behind me there. I just got tight on a nice fish. This guy's pulling like a different kind of fish. We're at 100 feet of water, which is crazy for us. We're used to fishing so much deeper. I got my drags. Oh, striper, baby. Striper! Woo! Yes, sir! That's what I'm talking about, boys! Yeah! Oh, dude! I've only seen these fish on film. So to get one on our sandy old jig that we uh, actually designed for this fishery, it's just so cool, man. Can you gill these guys? Yeah, they've got no teeth. How many can you keep? One per person, 28 to 31. Uh, Look at that, guys. So that's- He would probably fall on the slot. That's a striped bass. And then right, let's get on this side over here. Let's see Mr. Chris Doyle right behind here. Bam, double striper, buddy. How cool is that, cool, dude? Man, Cheers. Man. Right in the snoot. What kind of shark is that? Sand shark. Sand. So they've got a spine. Well, this one's got a broken spine, so he's already stuck something. But they've got two spines there. And then they've got teeth, but little sharp ones. They're kind of like our trash bottom fish. And we send, them, we send them over to Great Britain and you know, overseas as fish and chips. We don't eat them here, but we send them everywhere else. Yeah, all right, well. Oh, I got you. Thanks, brother. Paper on the one drop. All dude. that great action I was doing. You crushed it. Yeah, I, I crushed it. <laughs> Striper one job, and my action and technique was phenomenal. If, if the camera had been on, you would have seen my technique in action. Oh, he just made that down. Nice striper. Oh, he just came off. Jake's just stuck.
Have you got time? Oh. I hit him both. Nice. There we hey. go. See hey. how they landed. <laughs> this is awesome, guys. Yeah. Double it up on the stripers. Yeah. We've got quite a few striped basses by cash today. Started as sharks, but now it's been stripers, so that's awesome. We're here out of Cape Cod. We're out with Captain Matt Dempsey, Salt Reef Charters, and we are on the stripers. Left or yeah, the right side, whatever, wherever you can. Let's do a slow release. Try not to get my clubs wet. Ready? Guys, so Chris and I are putting down the uh, sand eel torpedo, and this is actually a lure that we designed for this fishery um, based on some uh, advice that we received from captains in the area. And you can see that it kind of resembles a sand eel. And then on the top, you'll notice that I actually have a pretty large size, I think it's a 7.0 Van Fook single assist and on the bottom i have a van fook single assist as well and that's a hundred pound fluorocarbon leader going to 65 pound daiwa j braid and the reason why i'm going so beefy even though we're getting on stripers at the moment ideally we're going to get into a bigger class of tuna fish i don't want to be outclassed by a thin line and a thin leader and a smaller reel and that's why I'm fishing the Valiant 800N in addition to the heavy line. As tempted as we are to come out here and throw our power two down in 150 feet on the 500 ends, giant bluefin tuna can show up at any time. The stripers would be no problem on the 500N, fighting them to the surface and even flipping them up on the power two, yeah. no problem. But the chances of that larger class tuna are so great that we don't want to miss out on it. No, we can't miss out on it. Once we get the tuna on this stuff, we'll face down to the power two and the 500 end value. Let's what drop, do you say? Let's drop some jigs, baby. Hooked up, baby. Man, we just found, I believe to be a honey hole of stripers. The whales are making their way towards us right now. The birds are, are popping all around. There's huge bait balls in the water. We're only sitting at 112 feet and we are just catching stripers. And they are absolutely just keyed into that sand eel. So this fish needs to be 28 to 31 to harvest. I'm gonna measure him right here on the core. He's right at uh, 26, so he's a little bit too small. So we're just gonna give him a nice release. Right back into the water here. Beautiful fish, man. Just a beautiful fish. Look at that guy. Let's get a little water in his gill plates there. He's ready to go. He's ready to go. There he goes. Okay. Look at the whale go. It's moments like these that leave you speechless. The ocean is our stage and we're a captive audience, coming together as one in the big wide open blue, as if time stood still, just for a split second, giving us a clear view of how vast and exhilarating the world truly is. Often, we can get so wrapped up inside the confines of the day to day that we forget to appreciate the rest of the world around us. That guy's probably a slot. This guy's sand dollar i just caught on the sand deal sand deal seems to catch everything this guy pulled some serious drag and uh i had to put the brakes on him paddled up here on the gunnel <laughs> uh this what i just caught near the bottom is very good sign for tuna this right here is a boston mackerel which is uh kind of why we made that tuna teaser greeny in the first place um, you can see they got the markings almost like a bonita, but they are a very fast fish. Apparently not much else can catch up to them other than tuna. So they're a great tuna bait. And uh, we've got about three of these so far on the jig. So these guys will hit the jig as well. Four. Oh, John got one too. Good sign that we're in the right place for tuna. 
people do eat these actually you'll see them in a restaurant depot in florida but they also make good bait i've used them actually down in the keys in uh, tortugas and Pulley ridge so, there it is folks a boston mackerel I don't think it's a tune. We're tight, boys. Shut up, it's not the right fish. Uh, we're just having an incredible day out here with Captain Matt Dempsey. Uh, just striper after striper going on to the boat. And I'm going to put a link down below for you guys for this captain. He really is amazing captain. Been putting us on fish all day. We had another mark way up high in the water column and we all ripped our jigs up as fast as we could to intersect with it. Captain Matt Dempsey got the hookup. I want to say it was luck of the draw, but it's probably no coincidence that the cap got the bite. It was the right jig, but on the wrong setup. John, Will, and I were fully outfitted with the SJ Railer and our new Pro Jigger Cat 6 prototypes. We have spent the past eight years fishing conventional setups almost exclusively. And now on the fish of a lifetime, we need to knock the dust off and get back into the swing of a spinning setup. I was wishing in my head that I had my hands around my own rod and reel. This fish peeled line off the reel and went on a massive run. It probably felt a lot like having a lasso around a super pissed off bull. Getting handle turns in was a challenge at times, and then the fish would turn towards the boat at full speed, giving me back hundreds of feet of line as I raced to catch up with him, only then for him to turn again and take it all back. This was likely the caliber of fish they catch on Wicked Tuna using massive commercial setups. I felt pretty good throughout the majority of the fight, but had no idea when the end would be in sight. I had little back and forth in my mind, if I should see this all the way through, or give Johnny a turn on the rod. I got juice last. Yes, <laughs> that jigging juice. I know, we've been jigging our brains out all day. Probably 50,000 pitches. And here we are tight on a spinning rod <laughs> to a bluefin tuna. I was itching to feel the power of this fish. For Chris to hand over the rod to me was pretty cool. I wanted to see what this was about. I can tell you one thing. It's no grouper. It's no snapper. King of toy jigs right here. I got to experience the power of this fish. I got to experience his runs until a certain point, things changed oh, because the fish just started coming in and it just felt like dead weight. His tail wrap. Tail wrap. When a fish is tail wrapped, he starts being pulled in backwards by the angler. And essentially, it suffocates the fish and he dies before he even reaches the boat. But just to be safe, the captain had the harpoon ready and he decided to stick the harpoon into the fish just for good measure. Go boys! Go! What fishermen seem to me, boys! Ladies and gentlemen, giant bluefin tuna. We couldn't be more satisfied to know that our sand eel jig that we designed and took meticulous care to make sure that it worked in this fishery yeah, landed boy. the fish that we wanted it to land. Bigger than you this guys thought. This made everything just perfect for us. Now we needed to get this giant fish on the boat quickly. Guys, so we had that tuna dangling over the side. Tail roped. Tail roped. Whooped. 
ready to come on the boat. The captain was getting the come along ready to pull him over the side and deck him. And a huge great white shark. 16 to 20 feet. I've never seen a great white shark before in my life. Came up and literally put, I would say 75% of that fish in its mouth. So now we're dragging the fish over the side here. It's getting away from the gray white. We're gonna pull him over the side. You guys are gonna get to see what he looks like. And what the shark did to him. Everyone we've told this story to so far has had the same question. Did you get it on film? I guess some things are left just for us. We did have the inclination to leave the tuna in the water and let the great white come back again, but that meat is just too good to give to the tax man. I will share that Captain Matt said that that was likely the biggest great white shark that he's ever had an encounter with. Should be able to slide him in. Woo! Look at the size of that fish, boys! There it is. You want to get this one framed? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we'll, even put touched, huh? we'll put oh, that. We'll put that. Is that a bad food cook? Ah. All right. Here's the jig and the terminal gear that was used to catch this bluefin tuna. Right there. First off torpedo 200 gram even in the sand deal color profile very appropriate for cape cod and this is a rig that cap uses here for giant tuna so he's got his 130 pound fluoro leader with a four turn fisherman's knot to a barrel swivel it's a pretty beefy number seven uh, split ring that he uses and then this is actually one of our hook sets it's a van fluke bbs hook set with our number six triple split ring here so yeah there's two split rings here on this way to rig the jig and the purpose is one you can quickly change out the jig if you want to make a, a jig change with uh, the big split ring here and the hook having the number six split ring on the head of the jig allows the the assist hook just to sit a little bit further down because uh, this this jig was just being used with one assist hook uh, on top so we got the we got the bite because the fish was about 40 feet under the surface. We were underneath them, so we were coming up to the fish quick that we were marking. Cap got the bite, hand the rod off to uh, to us to finish the job. But that that's pretty cool. That's exactly the jig and how it was rigged that just caught this tuna. It was crazy how quick he dwarfed that tuna. Yeah, right. Well, uh, yeah, no, he had the whole thing. In his mouth. <laughs> I didn't. I could hardly see the tuna. I didn't even see the tuna anymore. I saw this massive fish head going. Arr. How many close encounters with great whites have you had like that? Like that was one. Um, so I have them all the time. They usually right. kill stripers. Right. So you'll be reeling in a striper. Bang. That's right. Yeah. Uh, my buddy had a similar. But I mean, experience. I mean, up on the surface when you're yeah. pulling it out of the water, right there, they're charging right there. the boat. Yeah, so that one thing I can tell you guys is, you know how Chris and Will like to go swimming in the water? <laughs> they don't swim here. They won't get in the water. No, no, I, no. I told them to get in. They won't get in. <laughs> the, proof, the proof is in the pudding. We will never get in the water out here while fishing. From the beach, I'll be scared, but I'll do it. But All of them are close. Oh, I know, I know. I'll still jump in the waves, you know, numb out. It's dark. Cool off up here in Cape Cod. I can't get all right chris be honest top 10 places to fish oh absolutely <laughs> top all right top three baby top in the top three if i want to get back there and do it again i'm i'm right there with you man this was an incredible experience i have never experienced such a healthy fishery with bait so thick and monster fish you know marking on the screen all day long it was a special thing for me for sure and i gotta be honest it's a place where we can put our gear to the test and i can't wait to have the sj railer or the pro jigger cat six tight on one of those two nothing more rewarding than dropping one of our jigs and landing a monster that was the goal that's what we came here to do and we accomplished it. that's right We are going to the captain's house, Matt Dempsey, and we are going to process 
the yeah, giant great, great. tuna that we got. And uh, in addition to that, we're gonna process a couple striped bass. And we're gonna talk about the fishery with Captain Matt and get his take on his experience fishing you know, here. And I think it'll be super valuable insight to hear uh, what we witnessed yesterday was nothing short of majestic. We've just been in awe of, of just being out on the water in this special place, experiencing what the ocean offers. And uh, we're gonna cut this tuna up today and we're gonna bring it home to my family's house mm -hmm. in Orleans and we're gonna enjoy it amongst ourselves and with the family that I, that I have here. And uh, we're just really excited to just enjoy in the success of the trip, the jigs working wonderfully and just soak it in as much as possible before we get out of town because Hurricane Lee is on her way and uh, we hope everyone stays safe and our travel goes smooth, but stay tuned because this is gonna be another cool piece of this Cape Cod adventure. Right.